you know, uh, you brought up the, the match from Defy there. Yeah, I was uh, looking on your socials here earlier today, seeing what's up with you. Uh, you were just hanging out with Darby uh, the other day, it looks like. What did you? What were you guys doing? Some kind of punk rock bowling thing? What, what was yeah, it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's called punk rock bowling. I think there is a bowling component sort of historically. Uh, I didn't bowl. Darby didn't bowl. Uh, but it's sort of morphed into or, or involves bands as well. So it's kind of like the premier event in punk rock. It's three days long in Las Vegas every year. Uh, and it's just like the who's who uh, in punk rock. And without punk, I wouldn't be a wrestler. Uh, it was so funny to me. I think even my caption for that photo was, was something along the lines of so many people approached me over the three days and were like, we can't believe you're here. This is so crazy. And I had to laugh to myself because I was going to punk shows long before I was wrestling. And I'll go until the day I die. If I die at a punk show, awesome. <laughs> uh, so it was just funny because they, they only know you from a certain universe. And when you cross over to this music scene, which is I, I'm much more comfortable in and I belong even more so than wrestling. They're like, we can't believe you're here. And I'm like, of course I would be. This is this is why I'm alive. and This is why I'm here. So it was my sort of weekend off uh, just to enjoy myself, which is funny as a wrestler because you always couple that with this tinge of guilt because you're like, oh, I should be wrestling. I should be out there. I should be doing it. And I almost had to. Some fans' tweets helped me kind of keep it in perspective. They're like, no, you're allowed to have some time off and you're allowed to enjoy yourself and you don't have to fall on your head every weekend of your life. Uh, so it was, a, it was a week. Well, not that I didn't fall on my head still, but I, I, I was getting hurt in, in, a, in a different uh, universe <laughs> for, for once. And, and, and Darby's also a big fan of, of punk rock. So uh, he was there as well to see a lot of the bands. Uh, Youth of Today was a big second wave straight edge band. So uh, I, I was happy. To see him in the pit, in the mix. Uh, I saw Darby him. Allen, Darby Allen was in a pit this past weekend with you, I'm guessing. Mashing. Yeah, 100%. So it was pretty, I would imagine, a pretty awesome experience for some of the fans who happened to catch us together. Because that, that would have been mind-blowing in some degree to be like, wait, is that so-and-so? Is that so Are they in the pit? Are they jumping on our heads and slamming into us? And so it was, uh, I know I saw him. uh you couldn't stage dive because there was a gap, but I saw him sort of crowd surfing. I also was crowd surfing at one point. So, I mean, if you were a wrestling fan, we were like quite literally jumping on your head. So hopefully that was a cool moment for some people. I would imagine that created quite a scene. Do you feel like when you're in the pit and people realize it's you and Darby that they're uh, nicer or they do they get rougher because they're like, oh, my God, it's the wrestling guys. We should be able to throw them around right now. I, I've worried about that from time to time. Like, are they like, well, I've always wondered if I could be a wrestler. Should I sort of test myself against these guys? Or like, I can't go to a wrestling show and slam him, but I could totally do it here. So uh, luckily I haven't encountered that yet. Hopefully I never do. Generally people are just so psyched because these are really sort of underground niche bands. So they're just excited that someone that they know from another platform is, is, is enjoying this thing that's, so small and and you know when these shows come to cleveland there's 20 30 people so when they see you there they're like you like this really weird thing that i also like so they're just so psyched to see you there and it's never to the point of you know maybe if you went to like i don't know a u2 show or something and you were like mega famous it, it might get to the point where it was annoying but for me it's you know a handful of people at, at these small punk shows so uh all the interactions were, were really positive and, and cool Wow. Uh, all right. Couple, couple things coming out of that real quick. And I, I promise we'll get back to, to fight land here in a second. But one, I thought it was because I, th when I saw the photo of you and Darby, I thought it was you with a fan dressed as Darby because his face was kind of hidden. And then it took us. I was like, <laughs> that's no, that's actually Darby Allen. Uh, Darby's a very private guy. I know. Uh, what's it like to be friends with Darby Allen? I don't know that I've ever met anybody who's really kind of closer hung out with Darby Allen before, I guess. Oh, yeah. I that's interesting to me. I'm a bit taken aback because I don't know him in that regard. Cause it's, it's, I guess similar to CM Punk where sometimes these guys have like their circles and then they're a touch wary of people outside of their circles, which I understand because in both cases you almost sort of blow up overnight and then the interest level is crazy. And then it's like, well, who are all these new people and what, what are their, are they interested in me and what are they interested in? It's just, it's just like a different world for those people. So, so sometimes they'll, you know, I don't want to speak for them, but sometimes they may retract and be like, well, let, let me stick with who I, who I know and, and whose intentions I know. And sort of, there's some comfort there. Um, but yeah, he's cool. I mean, we're both straight edge and we're both into these really strange 
bands. So, you know, there's almost an instant connection to draw that CM Punk parallel again. When I first met him, it was like 2001. We're independent wrestlers. He lives in Chicago. I'm in Cleveland. They're very similar Midwestern cities. Uh, I think I was wearing a misfit shirt. He was wearing a misfit shirt, and we're both straight edge. So it 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 wasn't. It was inevitable <laughs> in some ways. You know, you're like, oh, what's up, other dude who's also parallel universe me? It, so it's sort of the same. So whereas with Punk, we were almost the same generation. He was slightly before me, so I was looking up to him in some regards. And maybe there's some elements now. Uh, with Darby and myself. So it's there's almost this weird timeline of, of like, okay, like there's this, I don't know, brethren or this passing or carrying of the torch between like the genuine punk straight edge community wrestlers. <laughs> so for us, it's all very familiar. Um, and, and yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I saw him and instantly it was, it, it was, it was cool to see him there. And again, like he was, he was in the pit, in the mix, and and everything. So it was a lot of fun for both of us. Yeah, last thing that guy needs is head to be broken open by some idiot with a steel-toed boot. I'm sure Tony Khan loves that. Anyway, um, <laughs> so...